Elon Musk just very, very clearly and concisely explained exactly why Tesla can't produce more electric vehicles right now. Hello, my friends. You're watching The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Welcome to the channel. Fantastic to see you. Fantastic to have so many new subscribers coming on board recently. Looking forward to seeing you on future videos and reading some of your comments in the comment section below to hear what you think about the news I share with you all on a daily basis. Just want to say a big shout out to those of you who've decided to become members of the channel. Members of the channel do get access to some videos 24 hours or even a day or even two days in advance on occasion. And also a big shout out to the Patreons on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below to how you can become a Patreon and support electric cars and to support having a better future. Now, Inside EVs recently reported on why Elon Musk said Tesla can't produce additional electric vehicles in volume. And he said this to try and temper expectations because companies are now kind of using Tesla to market themselves. I mean, Hertz obviously used the purchase of 100,000 electric vehicles from Tesla to market the brand. It's good. It's not a problem. I think I see that as a, a net win for us. It's a net win for everyone, in fact, because Hertz are just going out of their way now to market electric vehicles, which is great. It's working for them. Works for us. Everybody's happy. But, but, but recently... PepsiCo announced they were going to get some semi-trailers from Tesla and Elon moved to try and temper those expectations. Now, people often criticize Elon Musk for saying things that are kind of outlandish or overly marketing the company, being overly, overly optimistic. But I think that they actually just choose to ignore the times when he does the complete opposite. Like when a few months ago he said Tesla's stock price was too high. He's made other comments similar to that in the past as well on Twitter. And recently he said something on Twitter that I thought was quite interesting. Now, Elon was recently asked on Twitter about the Tesla Semi, which is delayed according to Tesla's official announcement. But at the same time, while well, the first one is expected to be delivered to PepsiCo this quarter, the fourth quarter of 2021. His answer was to not focus too much on that because the company can't produce additional vehicles in volume right now. They are constrained. And he talks about why they're constrained. He said, please don't read too much into this announcement from PepsiCo. As mentioned publicly, Tesla is constrained by chip supply short terms and cell supply long term. Not possible to produce additional vehicles in volume until both constraints are addressed. Now, I just want to divert for a second and talk about Toyota. Now, a lot of Toyota brand fans keep on saying Toyota is going to magically pivot right when they need to surprise everyone and start building millions of electric cars. Oh, if you haven't gotten it through your thick skulls yet, it's not possible to just magically produce the batteries needed for those millions of vehicles. You need to actually build the factories. You need to mine the lithium. You need to mine, you need to, there's an entire process that goes on that takes years to create. If you haven't learned that yet, then there's nothing I can say that will teach that Toyota and or other companies, other legacy automakers can't magically pivot to just somehow become these huge electric car companies within the space of a couple of years. It literally takes years and years and years to plan for the future. Therefore, whatever you're planning to do in 2021, what you plan to do for 2030 now is likely what you will actually do in 2030. So that's something to consider. When I announce and I talk about the news on this channel of what car brands are saying they will do in 2030, it's going to be hard for them to pivot away from what they're planning to do in 2030 because they're literally planning for production of that specific number of electric cars or specific number of petrol and diesel and gas cars in 2030. And trying to change from that magically within a short space of time just isn't actually logically possible. So we know what Tesla's two biggest challenges are. I think it's really interesting that Elon just comes out and says it. Number one biggest challenge clearly right now is chip supply. The number two challenge long term is cell supply. So what are Tesla actually doing about this? Well, I've made other videos about what Tesla's trying to do currently or over the last few months to deal with the chip supply shortage. I'll put some links in the description below to those videos. You should check those out. But what about cell supply long term? Well, obviously, this is a big issue that needs to be addressed for Tesla to produce additional vehicles in volume, such as the Tesla Semi 
the Tesla Cybertruck, which they have 1.35 million pre-orders for, the Tesla Roadster, and of course, the Tesla Model 2, or whatever the hell that's going to be called. Who cares? But you know what I'm talking about, the 25,000 US dollar Tesla electric vehicle. Who knows what the price will be, but people are you know, speculating that the price will be a fair bit cheaper than the Tesla Model 3. It'll be a car made for the Chinese market. Therefore, it's very likely it will be quite affordable. Now, fortunately, Tesla say that the chip supply bottleneck will ease within the next quarter. And I'm hearing the same news from well, the Chinese government, from Chinese automakers, from Chinese companies, from most of the industry right now, in fact, outside of China as well, to say that the chip supply shortage is actually starting to ease. Which makes me think then that Tesla's actual vehicle deliveries over the fourth quarter may surprise people. They may potentially be over 300,000. It's going to be very interesting to see what they achieve in the fourth quarter. Now, the second problem, the main one that is with us long term and will exist for every company, including Tesla, but for other companies, I think even more so than Tesla, is battery self supply. It's going to limit all electric car expansion in general. So, that would explain why Tesla has extended the list of its battery supplies from primarily Panasonic to LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions, CATL, its own production of its 4680 cell, and it sounds as though they've actually made a deal with BYD for 10 gigawatt hours of battery storage next year. Now, the demand for battery cells is currently so high that Tesla is trying to utilize every single channel available to them. And they often say, hey, if anyone else can make us more batteries, 4680 is what, the, what they want right now, then fantastic. Let us know and you know we'll do a deal with you. You give us a lot of batteries and we'll pay a, you know, a, a good price, but really we want to pay less than others. And when I say less than others, well, it's reported that apparently Tesla pays 30% less for its batteries than Volkswagen does. How they do that, no one really knows. But that's another one of t the reasons that Tesla has a cost advantage over other electric car manufacturers. Now, of course, the second reason to include new suppliers is the switch to affordable LFP batteries. As Inside EV says, Panasonic does not offer them, while CATL is more than happy to sell a lot of them in massive volume. BYD also manufacture them as well. And one more thing, if the cells are not the short-term constraint, then it means that there is enough supply of 1860 type and 2170 type cylindrical cells from Panasonic and 2170 type and from LG Energy Solutions to match the chip constraint output currently. And that's interesting to me. What does that mean for Tesla's delivery numbers over the next half of a year? Well, it seems to suggest that Tesla's delivery figures could dr drastically increase over the next six months. Now, obviously, chips and batteries are the constraints right now for all car manufacturers, everyone, absolutely everyone is affected by those two things. I do think though, electric car manufacturers are very clearly handling this situation better than everyone else. There's no doubt about that. Their sales are skyrocketing, whereas legacy automaker sales, uh, well, they're decreasing pretty significantly. In places like China, they're basically crashing, where car sales have fallen off a cliff. And yet, electric car sales are skyrocketing. So, that, to me, is an indicator of the market. In Norway, more than 90% of car sales are electric. In the Netherlands, more than 35% are plug-in. In Germany, more than 30% are now plug-ins. In other countries throughout Europe, we're seeing exactly the same trends. Now, I don't expect to see the Cybertruck or the Semi built en masse in 2022. There just isn't enough battery supply right now, in my view, for those vehicles which need an enormous amount of battery supply to be built en masse. 2023, though, will be an absolutely fascinating year. I can't wait to bring you the news in 2023 or in 2022. Exciting times right now. Fantastic to see electric cars adopted by so many people worldwide this year. Thanks for watching the channel. Looking forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.